special forces to northern Syria to help fight ISIS. What impact, if any, will that have? And following CNBC's handling of Wednesday's GOP debate, the Republican National Committee announcing it is suspending their partnership with the network for their upcoming February debate. What impact, if any, will that have? This is The Daily Wrap, live from New York City. And welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Joe Concha, along with my co-host, Rick Unger. Hey. With CNBC, or now NBC, losing that debate, does this mean that Newsmax fills the void? <laughs> uh, sadly, I suspect not. It'd be fun that you and I could uh, be the debate moderator. Wouldn't that be tremendous? Yeah, in our dreams. Yeah, I guess that's not going to happen. Not huh? this year. No, Maybe no. next time around. Well, it'll be interesting to see what network actually uh, does benefit from that. I, uh, my prediction is, is they will make peace with NBC before we get to February. Probably. Yeah. In the meantime, Donald Trump still slated to host Saturday Night Live on that yes, network on, on November 7th. Yes. So yes. be curious to see if he boycotts that as no, well. he won't. He probably won't. That's true. To Rick's right, she's an attorney and a senior fellow at the Independent Women's Forum. Gail Trotter is back for the second straight night once again. Great to and be with you. Great to see you. And finally, he's the founder and CEO of Change Up Media LLC. Ben Weingarten is back as well. All right, all-star lineup. Let's get right to the daily download. I will not put American boots on the ground in Syria. I do not foresee a scenario in which boots on the ground in Syria, uh, American boots on the ground in Syria, would not only be good for America, uh, but also would be good for Syria. And that was President Obama back in 2013 on two occasions reassuring the American people that the U.S. would not deploy troops on the ground in Syria. Earlier today, the president's policy appeared to shift with the announcement it would be sending special operations task force of less than 50 to Syria on an advise and assist mission to enhance their ongoing battle against ISIS. According to White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest, today's announcement is merely an intensification of the administration's ongoing policy to combat the terror group. The fact is, uh, our strategy in Syria uh, hasn't changed. The core of our military strategy inside of Syria is to build up the capacity of local forces to take the fight to ISIL on the ground in their own country. There are a variety of ways that the United States and our coalition partners can offer our support to those local forces, whether it's resupplying them or conducting airstrikes. Uh, and the President did make a decision to intensify that support uh, by offering a small number of U.S. Spot special operations military personnel to uh, offer them some uh, advice and assistance on the ground as they take the fight to ISIL. Now, it should be noted that since 2011, the U.S. has done special operations raids in Syria, including a ground operation. That said, this announcement appears to be coming, well, a little bit more intensified. Is this a continuation of a current strategy or the beginning of a much larger strategic operations against ISIS? Rick, what do you think? It depends. Um, this can be one of two things. This could have been nothing more, uh, given the timing of it, than providing John Kerry with a few more chips at the table as he attends that meeting in Vienna, yeah, right. where, where they're discussing the future of Syria. Or it could be the first step of something bigger. I will say this, if it's not intended to give some leverage to Kerry, then you can count on the fact that we will see an increase in people involved in this. If for no other reason than the support that's required now that they're going to be staying in Syria. Rick, Rick hits it right, that the timing of this is, is what could be concerning because you have ISIS in a stalemate right now. It seems like we've been there for the last year. They haven't really gained any territory. They haven't really lost the cities that they gained. So why now? Why special forces? Why only 50? Why, Gail? I wrote about this for a piece in The Hill a couple weeks ago, and I said we need boots on the ground in Syria and Iraq to co counter ISIS. And the problem is, though, going in with only 50 men and women, special sure. operations, it's not going to really help the situation there. Because sure. unfortunately, the Middle East does not play by Vegas rules. You know, Vegas, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, but what happens in the Middle East does not stay in the Middle East. That's interesting. Ben, it, it, what I'm worried about is that you have Russia, 
flying in that airspace and, and doing obviously bombing missions. We, we've seen the video, we, we, we've heard the testimony. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have the Iranians are in there as well. Now you have U.S. special forces in there, you have moderate forces or whatever's left of them fighting the Assad regime and then of course there's Assad's forces. All of that cluster you know what is going to lead to some sort of accident where U.S. forces could be in harm's way and who knows who's the one who's pulling the trigger. Yep, and you have to ask the question, for what? What is the end game in the Middle East? I mean, if we were to talk about a strategy, and let's say that this 50 forces is sort of a half-hearted, you know, soft way to interject yourself but not go too far in because of the quagmire concern and all the rest of it. The bottom line is that the president's strategy has basically been to um, push dictators out of power, authoritarian dictators, largely secular, and create a vacuum for jihadists, both Sunni and Shia in the region. So my question is, and the president's never articulated it, what, why is it in our national interest to be there? Obviously, ISIS is terrible, but so is everyone else there. You know, I just want to interject on this. There, you know, you may not agree with the strategy. I'm not sure I do. But there is a purpose to sending that small number. It's what's called troop, um, uh, I just forgot the word what it's called, uh, multipliers, mm -hmm. right? The idea is you send 50 people and they can train dramatically larger numbers of troops to do the job for themselves. That is the strategy. Make them capable of doing it. Then we don't have to send our force to do it. Who are we training? Well. In this case, it'd be Syrian moderates, assuming they really what's exist. What's a Syrian moderate? But what's interesting is we tried it a different way, and we saw how that worked out—a half a billion dollars to get five soldiers trained. Crazy. So this is this is the next version of that. Where I don't agree with you, Ben, I think we do have to be much more aggressive in taking on ISIL. There is a good reason to do it. And, you know, I know I'm not supposed to have that point of view. Being oh, liberal, I don't disagree with you to take out I think ISIL. We need to go course. for it. No, yeah, I, I, agree. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't disagree with you on and that. I just disagree about the strategy. American people agree as well. Last Pew poll showed 55%, a majority, now support ground troops when even a couple of years ago that was unthinkable. When no more wars, right. let's get out of Afghanistan, out of Iraq, our troops shouldn't be there, but now we've seen ISIS, and because of their communication strategy and showing how horrible they are, and obviously their intent to hit us in some way, shape, or form, I think people are saying we, this is a just war. We do our best when we take on clear unequivocal evil. Yes. Where we get in trouble is when we go into these wars where we're not quite sure why we are or we're not sure about the information. You can go all the way back to Vietnam. You can go to Iraq. Those are the ones that seem to go wrong. But nobody disagrees that ISIL is pure unadulterated evil. And they're That's killing U.S. citizens yes, in those are. YouTube videos. And, and other people that we should care no, about. No, I agree. And they run over people with tanks and they burn a Jordanian pilot right. to death in a cage. And yeah. you have the King of Jordan who goes out there and has airstrikes. You have the King of Egypt who has a forceful response to. What is our mission? President Obama has yet to articulate what our mission is there and what it should be. I think he's trying to, and this is just a guess, and I'm obviously not a military guy, but you can kind of see that they're writing on the wall. Do enough until he leaves office, and then it's going to be the next president's problem, right? Now, all that said, I'd love to know where all the Republican candidates uh, stand on this, but during all the debates, we're going to talk about the debates later in the show, there hasn't been one question about ISIS. I haven't heard a question right. about what is your ISIS strategy, and obviously it didn't come up in the Democratic debate either. So I have really not a clue who the hawks are and who the ones are that are kind of do this kind of I, I, I will say this about the Obama strategy and preface it by saying I don't again necessarily agree with it. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's so much a delaying tactic to get to the next president. I think the plan has been to rely more heavily on local troops who have skin in the game so to speak. It's their country that's disintegrating. It hasn't worked. That's the problem that right. I have. If it worked <coughs> it's a great idea. And then our guys don't have to go fight for them. But it isn't working. I, I hate to say that, let me be clear. But let me be clear on the on ISIS. <laughs> make ISIS no should a, yeah, make no mistake. ISIS should be wiped out. They should be annihilated. But the president needs to articulate what are our goals, strategies, and what are our tactics and national interests in the region because we're supporting everyone and then fighting everyone at the I same agree. time, and that's terrible for American morale. It hasn't been good. I don't disagree with that. Gail, last word. Does this escalate before he escalates. I think you're exactly right that he's going to try and do as little as possible so he can pass it off okay. to the next There's your last word. Well, speaking of wars, the <laughs> Republican National Committee announced today that it has suspended its future debate partnership with NBC News following CNBC's handling of Wednesday's GOP debate. We're going to delve into this development immediately following the break, but first we
want to know who won the CNBC GOP debate. Wasn't John Harwood? Wasn't Marco <laughs> Rubio? Dr. Ben Carson? Donald Trump? We're not leading you or anything. Go to NewsmaxPolls.com and cast your vote. That's NewsmaxPolls.com. Do it now. More in Daily Wrap in a moment. The questions that have been asked so far in this debate illustrate why the American people don't trust the media. And you look at the questions, Donald Trump, are you a comic book villain? Ben Carson, can you do math? John Kasich, will you insult two people over here? Marco Rubio, why don't you resign? Jeb Bush, why have your numbers fallen? How about talking about the substantive issues people care about? The contrast with the Democratic debate, where every fawning question from the media was, which of you is more handsome and wise? <laughs> that debate reflected a debate between the Bolsheviks and the Mensheviks. <laughs> <laughs> and that, of course, was Senator Ted Cruz making his feelings more than clear as to the behavior of the moderators during Wednesday night's CNBC Republican debate. Now, Cruz was not alone in his disgust. Dr. Ben Carson weighed in on the problem on yesterday's Steve Malzberg show, calling for a meeting of the candidates to discuss a more appropriate debate format. What I would uh, do and, and what I've asked uh, my staff to do is to reach out to the staffs of all the other candidates and uh, to, let's have a discussion about what debates really should be. Uh, we should be able to influence this process. And uh, what we would uh, prefer to have is something where candidates actually have an opportunity to state, you know, maybe what their economic policy is for three, four, five minutes, and then let the, uh, the interviewers question them about it so and then move on to the next person. That's that's something that would really be helpful to the people. Well, on Sunday, several of the GOP campaigns will be meeting in Washington, D.C. to see if they can plot a strategy that will give them a little more control over the coming primary debates. While we don't yet know all of the campaigns planning to participate, we do know who's not invited to the party. And that would be the Republican National Committee and its chairman, Reince Priebus. Up until now, the RNC has had the sole responsibility to determine which cable or broadcast networks would host the debates and the rules that would apply. Needless to say, the candidates do not feel that their national party organization has done a very good job of it. But Priebus was not content to sit back and be cut out of the action. So today, the RNC chairman delivered a letter to NBC informing them that, due to their poor performance earlier this week, their partnership with the network for the February 2016 debate scheduled to air on NBC is now suspended, at least for now. Joe, to say the least, it's unusual that candidates get to call the tune as to how the debates are staged, let alone see a party cancel a debate because of displeasure with the questioning. What are, what are both the short-term and long-term ramifications of such a move, and should the candidates have this much influence over how the debates are run? Short-term, this is Ryan's previous CYA covering himself for what happened with CNBC, showing that he's doing something. It's symbolic. Long term, you're exactly right. This will pass. They will come to an agreement with NBC. And here's what's going to happen. If it's back on NBC, those questioners will be so careful not to do what we saw on Wednesday night and offer up fair questions that aren't seen as attacked, maybe tough like Anderson Cooper did, but certainly ones that aren't personal and aren't marinated in snark. Well, see, that's that's my concern, and, and I agree you know, that that is the way they behaved on Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. What I do worry about a little bit, Gail, is will this have a chilling effect on how these debates go forward? Will they be so concerned about being canceled at some point in the future that they'll tiptoe around the whole thing? I disagree with Joe. What? I think that we're going to have the opposite <laughs> effect. I think they cannot control themselves. It's so much a part of how they're wired, and they want to make it about themselves. They want to be on stage. They want to draw attention to themselves. And I keep remembering Katie Couric's question to Sarah Palin about what books do you read and what what do you um, you know where do you Newspapers. get your intellectual engagement? Right. And I think they just think that way. But they that have was, these. That was a pretty fair question. No, I mean nobody asked Hillary Clinton that. It's but crazy. They could. The, and like the. the stuff that they're at I mean it's completely insulting to ask someone because it's such a loaded question not that you wouldn't be able to answer but you don't expect that you want a policy well, except question. That Sarah Palin in fact couldn't answer 
because she was stunned by it. Who who asks a question like that? All right, so Ben, let me ask you this. Right now, what Ben Carson's recommending and what I'm told he'll bring up Sunday, mm -hmm. he would like to see the debates go in a, a direction where you get three to five minutes to make your point about a topic, and then it's open for discussion. One, is that a good idea? And two, when you've got 10 candidates on the stage, do the math, how is that ever going to work yeah, out? Yeah, Donald Trump will shoot that down first thing for yeah. one thing. But, I mean, look, I think that the intent uh, behind that idea is great. If we want to make this about the merits of each of the candidates and we actually want to drill down on what their plans are on five or ten different issues, that would be a great thing for the country. It would be a great thing for political rhetoric, and I think it would actually expose where people have real substantive differences. Um, so it's great in theory. I think it's idealistic and it fits with what Ben Carson, I think what he really is as a person and how he views politics. But do I think that the other candidates are going to ultimately agree to that? Absolutely not. Well, Joe, to make that possibly work, and I think you're probably right, Ben, I don't think all those candidates are going to go for it. But even if they did, to make it work, has the time come? to start dropping some people out of the main event debate. If you've got less than 5%, sorry, you're going down to the 6 o'clock debate. Yes. They've only got a few people there now. Is it now time to let Americans focus on the leading candidates? Absolutely. But I think in February, when this NBC debate or whatever it is, you're going to have some folks dropping out by then. That's yeah, after but there's the debates first between primary. now and then. That's just the NBC debate. Uh, that's true. What about the upcoming ones? That's true. Uh, but where, where do you draw the line, right? I well, mean, they it's picked it in, the, I mean, how, why draw the line at 10? That's what they've done. Yeah. If you have to have 10% and higher, it'll just be Ben Carson and Donald I, Trump going, going at each other, maybe yeah, a Ted Cruz, But I right? think the time has come in these primary debates to winnow it a bit more. I'm not saying they can't debate, but if we're going to stick with this children's table format, let some of those people go down. Either way, NBC we, should have Lester Holt do that debate. I all think right. We want to know what you think is necessary to improve the quality of the debates so that Americans can learn more about what these candidates believe in and where they stand. Let us know your comments at NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. More on the fallout of the debate when we come back. Well, hi there. Happy Friday. As <laughs> promised, let's continue our Q&A regarding the RNC and its decision to dump NBC from its next debate because of no TLC from CNBC, <laughs> which shouldn't be confused <laughs> with MSNBC or the old WNBC radio. <laughs> LOL. To get things started, let's share what some feel was the line of the night from whom some feel was the winner of the night. Marco Rubio, waxing poetic about what he feels or whom he feels, is Hillary Clinton's most fervent supporter. You know, the Democrats have the ultimate super PAC. It's called the mainstream media. Whoever single day, and I'll tell you why. Last week, Hillary Clinton went before a committee. She admitted she had sent emails to her family saying, hey, this attack in Benghazi was caused by al-Qaeda-like elements. She spent over a week telling the families of those victims and the American people that it was because of a video. And yet the mainstream media is going around saying it was the greatest week in Hillary Clinton's campaign. It was the week she got exposed as a liar. Okay, I've never been one to use the term mainstream media or liberal mainstream media anywhere, here on TV or in my columns. Here's why. It's a beaten down term, and it's used so often that sometimes the impact gets lost. But Wednesday night wasn't one of those times where Republicans and conservative media were whining without warrant for being treated differently from their Democratic counterparts. They were treated differently, blatantly. Because look at this recent study from the Conservative Media Research Center, which shows 65%, two in three, of the 43 questions that were asked were negative, with negative being defined as those with personal insults or attacks, such as John Harwood's question to Donald Trump asking if he was a, quote, comic book version of a presidential campaign. So here's your question. Since every network can't be boycotted, what can the GOP do moving forward to avoid this kind of situation again? Well, I gotta ask a question first. Yes. You can't say that, that they're being treated differently than Democrats by putting up that study and not doing a comparison to how negative the questions were in the Democrats debate. What was that? Do you think that the, well, just by, on the don't surface, know. did anybody say that Anderson Cooper was really mean no, to Hillary thought, Clinton and I Bernie Sanders? I thought Anderson Cooper did a great job, but you got to have but both look sides at the donations, to make the though, from, from left, I mean, uh, uh, do you honestly think that every major media organization is composed of a 50-50 balance between Democrats no, and Republicans? Not. No, your 
ideological kindred spirits have won. They have the media. You don't even need to say leftist media. Yeah, it's just the media. Just the media. Excuse me. Yes. You can't cite a study on one side without making a comparison. But I understand. More, but there wasn't one complaint but, about the Democratic debate in terms of being too right, negative. But more important. But, I, but, but to your point, to your point, right. all right, I'm conceding something. Context is everything. <laughs> it is. And perhaps a number sure. should have come <laughs> up. But I, I would venture to but say let me get to that the more important a majority point. of questions weren't deemed negative at personal attacks. The, or, or the more important point is Marco Rubio is absolutely full of it. He ought to be using oh, some of that time oh, 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 oh. Uh, when he's not going to work in the Senate to actually read newspapers oh, because boy. he would find out See? that the That's Washington the Post, the New York Times, the most liberal of liberal media, has been beating the you-know-what out of Hillary Clinton since she decided to run for president. Now, you can say that they, they're, they're nice to the president. You can say they're nice to Bernie Sanders, but they have not given Hillary Clinton any breaks. I'm going to take the rest of the uh, the segment off, and I'm just going to give it to Gail. She turned her, the same color as her dress when Go she was listening it. to I <laughs> did, and I think the media has given Hillary Clinton a warm oh, kiss and just con wants to continue to go forward bolstering her career because they feel like she's the inevitable candidate and this is her time. But I think it is would be criminally uh, a problem if any woman voted for Hillary Clinton just because she's a woman. Oh, I agree. And I think that they, the media is continuing to try and resurrect this war on women meme and they are being very successful. At that was her worst week ever with the Benghazi hearing because she was shown, as Marco Rubio said, as being a congenital liar, as even the Washington yeah. Post liberal commentator Rick thinks it was Sa her best week ever. It, it, I disagree. Well, then look at the polls, and we won't have History to have the will argument. Tell. History will tell. Yeah, she's well, going to be fine. Does anybody, <laughs> does anybody answer my question, by the way? What was the question? Yeah, what's what? Uh, let me re re read it again. <laughs> Since every network can't be boycotted, what can the GOP do <laughs> moving forward to avoid this sort of situation? I offered up quickly, and Brick had to go to break, that, yeah. like, for instance, when NBC does a debate, I don't want five monitors, six people. I want one. And in NBC's case, if I were running the RNC, I'd say put Lester Holt in there. I think he's a fair guy. Oh, that's, that was your point. Yeah. I yeah. see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think obviously if you can also advocate for some kind of balance. I mean, CNBC has reporters that are not John Harwood on their team as well. But I mean, honestly, from my point of view, in a perverse sense, it's kind of good when you have a panel like that of moderators asking the questions because all the Republicans were able to turn it around and turn the crowd and everyone else against the media. And there's something positive about that. And I think you saw actually how politically shrewd some of the candidates were, including Rubio, Cruz, Why Christie. I think it was positive in terms of red meat for, for yeah, the right audience and, and for, for, for staunch conservatives, but we got nothing in terms of... I'm not saying they didn't deserve it, but yeah. how do we learn anything from yep. their being able... How is that positive? Well, we have something called the internet now, and you can go on their websites and see what their policies are. Yeah, how many people are, are doing that, though, right? Nobody does Last, it. the remaining debates, CNN, Fox, ABC, CBS, Fox, and CNN. Those are your, your remaining people, and they've done a fair job. Newsmax. This. And Newsmax, probably. <laughs> that's right. So are you interested in being on the Daily Wrap? Interesting. You can go to NewsmaxTV.com slash talkback. There you'll find instructions on how to submit questions or comments on a video to us. And if worthy, we'll play them on the air. How cool is that? More DW and a little more than two and two. There have been a number of surveys of veterans, and overall, veterans who do get treated are satisfied with their treatment. Much now, more so than people much, in the regular system. Uh, it's yes. exactly right. right. Now, nobody would believe that from the coverage that uh, you see uh, and the constant. Uh, berating of the VA that comes from the Republicans in, in part in pursuit of this ideological agenda. That but in have. part because there has been real scandal. There has and, but it's not been as widespread as it has been made out to be. And that, of course, was Hillary Clinton suggesting that the problems at the Veterans Administration have not been as widespread as, as it's been made out to be. Clinton further blamed the perception that the VA is failing on a Republican agenda intended to bring about the privatization of the services provided by the VA. But is she right? Certainly not according to a recent CNN investigation which found that wait times to get into the VA are actually getting worse. What's more, a federally funded report released in September of this year concluded that the VA continues to be plagued by a wide host of problems. Now, addressing Mrs. Clinton's comments, Paul Rykoff, founder and CEO of the Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, said that Clinton's remarks were a, quote, head-scratcher. Rykoff added that the Clinton argument is neither winning nor factually correct. 
So the big question, <clears throat> is Hillary attempting to insert the VA into partisan politics, and is that where it belongs? Because she wasn't accurate on the point itself. Yeah. This is a situation where we need to rise above partisan politics, so I'm not even going to criticize Hillary on this. I just am going to call her better spirit out that we should be doing the absolute best for our military men and service women who write a blank check to protect all of our freedom. I am going to criticize Hillary for it because I wasn't happy about it at all. She was correct to a point in the first part of her statement. There are VA hospitals in the country that once you get in, they do a very good job. Unfortunately, it goes city by city. Some are better than others. But to suggest that too much has been made out of this problem does a gross disservice. The biggest problem we have is that everybody agrees that the VA is critical, that we have an obligation to the people we send to fight for us, and then they forget about it. It's a, it's a total blight on our nation's soul, as the bottom Absolutely. line. Absolutely. And um, the only partisan part that I'll interject or inject into it is just that when Hillary opens her mouth, it's always political and partisan. Right. Nothing well, that she see, says isn't. And, and this is something where it really should be about. I can't argue with you. It should be our, about our veterans. You know, forget, forget about the politics. I agree. Of it. And, you know, this is the problem. People like me who might be more inclined to take her side in a situation, I'm not going to argue your point because I don't care if this is because the Republicans want to privatize the VA. Make the case as to why that's bad for our veterans if you think that's what it's about. But don't say that the problem's not as widespread because we know that it is. Many of you will recall along those lines that in May of 2014, when General Eric Shinseki stepped down as the head of the VA, and that, of course, was following a series of scandals and exposés on just how bad things were going over there, before he did that, the general at least went public and acknowledged the truth. He said he had initially believed the problems were limited and isolated, but he no longer believed that to be the case. He admitted that the problems were systemic and that he would not defend the VA because it was, in his words, indefensible. So we replaced Shinseki. He was replaced with a one-time Procter & Gamble executive, Robert McDonald, who was supposed to get the VA back in working order. But does anyone think for any reason that things have substantially improved under new leadership, Joe? Obviously There's no not. evidence. No, there is no evidence. And, and I'm sure that Robert McDonald is a very capable person. I think the problem is bigger than one man coming in to fix it. This is wholesale changes that have to be made, and that means more resources and a hell of a lot more money than they're currently getting right now, because otherwise it's not a one key turnkey solution, as they say, or but one person solution. I, I agree with that. And I'm going to soapbox here just a little bit if you uh -oh. guys don't mind because this is an issue that really really gets to me look you like to call our country an exceptional nation you tell me how we can be exceptional when our number one obligation and when I say number one I mean before welfare before defense before anything is to keep the promise we make to our veterans who go risk their life so we can sit here and fight in Congress how can we call ourselves exceptional if we don't keep those promises. We're not keeping those promises. My question to you, Gail, is any ideas on what we should be doing? Do you think privatization is the way to go? Will that really provide our vets with the care they need? Yes, but we should find out from the vets what they want. I mean, if you see them talking about the types of, you know, frustrations they have with the system right now, it's very clear that it's not working for them. So privatizing it would give them more power over these choices that are made, and I think we should go it in might, that direction. It might. The one thing where I have a lot of concern is, is some of the great research uh, in head injuries and, and things like this, prosthetics, comes from the VA because of the experience they get. I would hate to lose that, and I think we would if we went the privatization route. In any event, we should all talk about this some more. We want to know what you would do to improve the health care provided to our nation's veterans. Let us know your thoughts at NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. Coming up next, time for your viewer comments. Stay with us. All right, let's jump right into it. Let's get to some of your viewer comments. First up, we have some thoughts regarding Wednesday's debate. Lessa says, the CNBC debate was an example of how to never run a debate. 
horrible will never look at n b c again i wish i could make the same promise <laughs> days of our lives is getting good <laughs> bow and hope are having some problems and roman's back i was going to say you're not going to watch the blacklist no. a blacklist with your girl that's right karen had a different take asking why do we only hear about the moderators and not about the issues that were discussed is this any better than the job the moderators did? Well, I would say no. I mean, that was the problem, that we didn't get any of the substantive issues, just a lot of people insulting one another. Yeah, but it was entertaining on a certain level. Yeah, but that's... It's not selfish, and I know it's shallow, but, I mean, the, the two hours were interesting to at least watch the GOP candidates finally push back and say, I'm not answering that question, you're blatantly Enter biased. Entertaining yes. is good, informative is better. But, you I know, agree. if the country's going to hell, then I'll take the entertainment. Yeah. Oh, geez. Oh. <laughs> this country will never go to hell, so we can we can still have the information. Joe. All right, and continuing with our debate theme, Bill asks, are all news stations bought and paid for by the DNC? <laughs> will we ever see a real GOP debate? How about you guys? Too late to people you know want how we us feel there. about it. We're with you all the way. What would be your whatever first question? Happened, whatever happened to that organization who used to run the debates? Oh, it was like League of uh, um, Women's Voters. Women's, yes, right. Yes. Well, why aren't they doing it anymore? They used to do a great job. You know what I'd like to see is a real cross-section of either leaders of think tanks or other prominent people no, 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 not across the Republican no, spectrum. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, fine. No, no think tanks. But <laughs> nobody will understand but, but, it. But you should have a libertarian, you should have a conservative, you should have a moderate Republican, and they should lob questions at them, and it should how be a real a, how debate. How about a moderate Democrat, too? Throw it in there. That's fine. Yeah. But do they exist? I think before you go. <laughs> yes. I, like what I said last night, yeah, I think exactly. if yeah, you have standard reporters, reporters that cover this stuff, Right, and that's all. They don't have no aspirations right. to be on TV, right. have no aspirations to upgrade anything. They're just going to ask good questions. Those people are out there. Have you I ever don't care met if we don't know a reporter are. who didn't have aspirations to be on TV? Sure. Working for a TV network? Uh, yeah, they, I think some actually do exist. Yeah, yeah very few, yeah, but we could that. find yeah. them. <laughs> all right, our next good viewer point, comment good point, good point. is directed to me with Doug asking, uh -oh. me, hey, Rick, been lied about... I can't read what he said. Ben, ben oh, lied. Ben lied. Ben lied, but Hillary didn't? That's a question. Your smarmy comments, why do I always say they're smarmy, are so <laughs> left you can't see simple truths. You make me sick. Right back at you, bud. <laughs> People have to understand something. Let me speak to our, our audience at home, all right? He loves it when you send this stuff. Yes, I do. He actually <laughs> laughs. He's like, no, oh, yeah. <laughs> Shifting gears a bit in reference to the Washington State football coach. His name is Joe Kennedy. Suspension for praying on the field. Though he has been reinstated to coach again, Dwayne writes, this coach should have never been put on leave. It is just another case of liberals like Rick. Uh, does it say that in proper now? <laughs> Wanting to control what they think I every the guy. And I know you were. Should be doing. God and great leaders many years ago is what made this country great. Actually, from what he says, he's been put back into his coaching? Correct. Yeah. I did not know we that. We just That's learned that just a couple year. hours ago. He's know. been reinstated. I'm glad to hear it. Probably That's because good. of your rant last night. Well, I hope him. so. Because, see, I did. I got behind that guy. Eddie agrees, adding, why the big uproar? He is praying silently, so, so the only one who hears him is God. Why are people so afraid of public display of prayer? Interesting. Yeah. I uh, don't disagree. You don't disagree. I don't think the guy did anything wrong. I don't think he should have been removed from his job, and I'm very happy to hear he's back. Wow. I, I think if you were a betting man, you have to put money on this high school team tonight because of the inspiration of him coming back and coaching. I'd have to know more of the running back stats. <laughs> yeah, that's true. An offensive line, right? Yeah. Right. Good point. Anybody watching the World Series? That's the question. Uh, sure. I will be there. You'll be, You're there going I'll be there I'm sprinting out of here right after this. Don't show. we have wow. extra work he has to stay after and do? Yeah. So we can get his tickets. Well, That's I might have to shirk that. Just <laughs> that out there. All right, sure, sure. And I want you to be honest here. What'd you pay? For the uh, oh, I, it, it, was it was a gift. It was a gift. A gift, really? From the Clinton Foundation. Very generous gift. And from the Clinton Foundation. They're bipartisan. That was nice. Very good. Yeah. And how are your seats? They're pretty good seats. They're field seats. Field box seats down the line in right field. Wow. I'm going to have to look yep. for you. You have a jersey or a hat or anything you're going to uh, I've got a hat. I've got a lucky sweater. Okay. It'll work out. Sounds good. I did not see that coming, I swear to you. <laughs> anyway, if you want to weigh in on any of the issues we talk about here in the show, be sure to send them to newsmaxtv.com slash comments right below. As you can see, we read them on the air. If they're good and they're well written, have good grammar. Well, not really. Up next, <laughs> it's time for yay or nay. But first, Newsmax has this special offer, the shocking new book unlikable. The Problem with Hillary by Edward Klein has already skyrocketed to the top of the bestseller list. It's probably the most powerful expose on Hillary 
ever written. In Unlikable, author Ed Klein offers a stunning, powerful expose of Hillary Clinton and her race to the White House. With unprecedented access, Klein meticulously recreates conversations and details of Hillary Clinton's behind-the-scenes strategies. Klein also reveals the angry rivalry between Hillary and Barack Obama. Unlikable retails for $29.95, but now you can get it with our free offer. Get this almost $30 value absolutely free. Just go to Newsmax.com slash Klein or call 1-800-850-8749-2016's coming. You better be armed with the truth about Hillary. Check out our incredible offer right now. I didn't see the whole brick thing coming out. You're spooky, dude. Anyway, welcome back to the Daily Wrap. It's time for a scary Halloween edition of Yay or Nay. First up, did you know by carving a pumpkin for Halloween, you're contributing to the destruction of Earth as we know it? That's right. And this isn't according to Al Gore or some far-left news outlet, but the Obama Energy Department, which says the holiday squash is responsible for unleashing greenhouse gases into the atmosphere after millions are discarded and decomposed. The news comes as the Department of Energy is urging kids to dress up as... Hope you're sitting down. Solar panels and wind turbines <laughs> for Halloween in a green initiative it's dubbing Energy That's Ween. Boy, that just Energy flows right ween. off the tongue, yeah. doesn't it? And this is this isn't the onion. This is all really true. You can look it up. Yay or nay question. When considering countries to move to because the people running this one have clearly gone insane, is climate your number one consideration? Well, actually, I know it's Ben's because I don't know if you picked it up, but it was great when you said this doesn't come from any left-wing organization. Yeah. It comes from the Obama Energy yeah. Department. He's sitting there going, what's the difference? That's redundant, <laughs> yeah. That's a very good point. Didn't think about that. Well done. <laughs> Well, with my kids, I just see all the indoctrination, and we have a Fourth uh, of July parade in Washington, D.C., and it's not mm -hmm. the red, white, and blue anymore. It's red, white, and green. So I think it takes all the fun out of Halloween to have these ridiculous suggestions that I completely object to. So you're carving then. Okay. Yeah, I just want to, I mean, we're talking about how do you deal with ISIS, and since global warming causes terrorism, yeah. if we just got rid of squash, we'd win. That's so a very that's good point. it. <laughs> all right. Just, war's so over. No, no one answered here. Yeah, war's over. Warmer squash. one. Squash. Who so cares about squash as long as the candy's still there? Right. Then it's all good. Okay. Answer my question quickly, though. The original one was uh, climate. What, climate, yeah. And country you moved to to get out of this one because everybody's gone well, nuts. I like global warming yeah. because it's better in New York, so I'm okay it's staying warmer. here. You're going to stay. Yeah. Okay. You're staying? I'll never leave the U.S. Okay. You? I'm up. Well, I live in other countries sometimes, but I'm not, I'll always so be you're going to Mexico. Okay, I'm going to Mexico. <laughs> I do Australia. Australia. I do a little uh, Melbourne. Anyway, next up, staying with the Halloween theme. Did you know an exorcism will be performed on live television tonight? The cast and crew had a walkthrough last night. However, we have the tape. Here's a preview. Just see this. Look at this. Father, think of the child. <laughs> yeah, that's what we might be seeing tonight. Welcome to Exorcism Live. It airs tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern on something called the Destination American Channel. That's a cable channel owned by Discovery Communications. Check your local listings. The two-hour telecast features a clergyman, a psychic, and the team from the network's Ghost Asylum series to go into the very same spooky suburban St. Louis home that inspired the Exorcist book and movie. Ghost hunters insist that the house is filled with dark, sinister energy. We just call that Unger around here. <laughs> and Exorcism Live is determined to cleanse it. Yay or nay, will you be watching with all the lights on and some garlic nearby? Well, let's see, the World Series or an Exorcism? Mm, good point. Not a very hard call. I don't think I'll be seeing that tonight, no. All right, in the spirit of Halloween, no. I would, but I'll be on the Excella wondering if Chris Christie is in the quiet car disturbing people. And tonight. drinking a strawberry Ooh, milkshake wow. from the It was a smoothie. Yes. It wasn't a milkshake, Benny. Well, I'll be at the, uh, the Net World game, Series, yeah. So, so yeah. not going to DVR No, but nah, probably Can not. But I'm, I'm happy James Woods is in it. And, you know, so there's a conservative. <laughs> we're back. Uh, good we're back point. in good culture. Point. Finally tonight, did you miss watching the GOP debate on Wednesday night? No worries. The good folks at Jimmy Kimmel Live on ABC got you covered. Should the federal government play a larger role in helping to set up retirement plans for these workers? No. 
the federal government should the not play a larger role. The more you tax something, the less of it you get. Well, why should all of our and we'll be right back. <laughs> no yay or nay question. That about sums it up. Okay. Well, that's our show. On behalf of co-host Rick Unger, Ben Weingarten, Gail Trotter, thanks for joining us tonight. The Steve Malsberg Show. That'd be next. <laughs>